I've made hundreds of mistakes over the years as a photographer. Maybe I can save you the trouble of some of these mistakes as we discuss Ilford's Delta 100 black and white film. My name is Rob Skew. I'm a career photographer and I've been shooting professionally for over 45 years and I've been shooting film for over 50 years. Maybe some of these techniques that I've learned as a photographer shooting for Major League Baseball and the NFL, getting published by magazines like Sports Illustrated and even National Geographic, maybe some of these tips will be useful to you as you want to learn about film photography. So I want to talk today about Ilford's Delta 100 black and white film. Now I'm just back from a road trip, shot a lot of film, was gone for a couple of weeks, and on the trip I shot a roll of this Rolly infrared film. Now my tip to photographers is don't take any tips from anyone who's only shot one roll. How much knowledge could I have on that film? I don't have anything to offer. It's still on the camera. I haven't even seen the negatives. But when you talk about a film like Ilford Delta 100, I have shot hundreds of rolls. So I want to look at some pictures from a trip I've taken in the past where I've shot the Delta 100. Maybe it's a perfect film for you. Maybe it's a film that you should try at least. So let's look at this trip that I took and I shot some Delta 100. So it was in Lake Louise Park in Alberta. And I was out there for a, working for a ski race with, with Sony. We sent out a bunch of gear and the, the media could use it at the ski race. So the, the, the broadcasters and the, and the wire services and that could, we were supplying gear for them to use at the race. So I would work really hard in the morning and then in the afternoon I would either ski or I would go and take photos. So the, the race itself is out of uh, the, the lodge at Lake Louise and then some days I would go up the gondola with my camera. Not really uh, any great photo that I got out at the top, but this gives you an idea. And then Lake Louise itself, frozen solid. It was like 30 below, uh, fresh, we would say, in Canada. And uh, there's actually some people skating on the lake. I'm not a big walk on the ice type of person. I'm always afraid I'm gonna drop through. But I was there shooting with a Pentax 645 and Delta 100 film. Now, the great thing about the Pentax is in the rebate on the film, it imprints uh, the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO that you're using, and the lens. So I actually know accurately exactly what shutter speed I was using for, for these shots. So, that, so that's interesting information. Now, Delta 100, the, the box speed is 100 ISO. And box speed is like the mileage of your car. In the brochure, it says it's going to get 43 miles to the gallon. But when you get it home, it gets 28. And I think box speed is a bit like that. So it's ISO 100 in a perfect condition in the lab. But I just find it a little more useful to shoot it at ISO 60. That's giving me a little more shadow detail. I'm going to process it normal. It'll give me a little more shadow detail and I'll just have that little bit more information. And I find that useful for printing. If you're scanning, your mileage may vary. You'll, ha you'll have to test out a few rolls and there's nothing wrong with, you know, trying it and failing and seeing what you get. So if we're using it at ISO 60, the, the rule of 16 would say uh, 60th of a second at F16 in full sun. Okay, that's a great starting point for app for your for your exposure. So uh, we're going handheld because when I shipped all this gear out, I didn't ship a tripod for myself, so I only had a monopod. So instead of shooting at a 60th at f16, let's say we're going to use a base exposure of 125th at f11 handheld. Now I've got the sky in the photo, and I want to darken the sky so that my my white fluffy clouds or the snow are contrasted against the darkened sky. So I'm going to use an orange filter. I use a B plus W040. Any orange filter will do. They look orange when you look at them. Now that filter sucks up two stops of light. So instead of being 125th at 11, I'm now 125th at 56. So f5.6, that's the sweet spot for 35mm lenses. If you've got an f2.8 lens, 5.6 is perfect. Uh, it's a great spot on 35mm. It's not a ton of depth of field, however, but it is a sharp spot on the lens. Now 5.6 on 2 and a quarter, that's not a great spot to be. You probably want a greater depth of field than that. And on large format, you know, 125th at 5.6, 
the lens might be a 5.6 lens. You might be wide open. In fact, I had a lens that was 12.5. So certainly that's not going to work. But then you would have been on a tripod. And I wish I was on a tripod for these shots as well. Just had a monopod. So as you see, I'm out here at the beginning at Lake Louise. And there's a bit of a storm in the background. And there's some skaters on, on the rink. And I've got the Pentax 645 with the monopod. So what I've found in the mountains is you'd think you're going to use a wide angle lens, but it's really the tops of the gnarly mountains that contrast with the sky that I like. So I find I use a telephoto. So a 120 on the 645 or a 200 mil lens on, on the 645 were more useful than actually any of the wide angles that I brought. So I'm out on, I'm out on the ice shooting with my monopod. Basically, 125th at 5'6", if the full light is there. Now, this particular shot with the 120, uh, that was 125th at 5'6". The, the sun was coming in and out, uh, full sun, not full sun, so it kind of changed around a bit. So this first shot is 125th at 5'6", and you get an idea of what the scenario looks like here in the color, in the color shot. And then I've, I've kind of zoomed in with the telephoto. Now, the second shot is with a longer lens, and it's wide open f4 at a 60th of a second. The light is a little lower in the day. I've got the dark filter on. Now, if this was a full 645 print, you would have the road in the photo. So I've just cropped the road out in the, in the dark room. And if I print this again in the dark room, maybe make a bigger print, I'll use a darker exposure and get a little more detail in that snow. You want some detail in the snow, but you don't want it to go dark and dirty. So it's kind of very close uh, for, your, for your exposure in the dark room. So as we progress along, you know, different parts of the park, again, this is the full rugged mountains with a 120 mil lens and it's that basic exposure 125th at 5.6. And you've got that dark filter darkening the sky, so it gives you that contrast with the granite against the sky. If you didn't have the filter, that sky might be white. Uh, it might be a little bit of tone in it, but it might be white. So how do you get a, a great dark sky? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. There's the rule of thumb. So you point your finger at the sun and your thumb is pointing to the darkest part of the sky. Can you work that into the photo? Can that be your background? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that's definitely the darkest part of the sky. Now the orange filter darkens the sky and it's different at sea level than it is at altitude. So at sea level it has one effect, but at altitude it's, the sky darkens even more. So that's something to, to consider. So that orange filter is gonna darken the sky, but in the mountains, it's gonna darken the sky more dramatically. And of course, you can burn it in a little bit in the dark room just to kind of get that dark tone. It helps if there's snow on the hills to separate with the white snow against the dark sky and any clouds are white as well. So it is beneficial if there's snow there compared to just the black granite. If you had just the black granite, it might blend in with the darkness of the sky. So you just have to be uh, aware of these things as you're shooting. And this again is a full sun, uh, 200 mil lens, 125th, should be at 5.6 as I was saying, but I've gone a little bit less exposure at 6.7. There's so much snow in the photo, I didn't want it to, to kind of blast out and, and I uh, won't be able to print it in the dark room. And again, this would be something you have to be careful of uh, if you're printing, you, you want to experiment a little bit. And if you're scanning, sometimes if the negative blocks up in the highlights, you can't, you can't scan through that. So again, you, this is a great starting point, but after shooting rolls and rolls of film, uh, maybe taking notes. I, I don't take notes. I talk into my phone. I do a video and kind of tell myself what I'm doing. And I just watch that back. I just find it more convenient than taking notes that I'll lose. So is Delta 100 the perfect film in this situation? Well, that's a good question. So if I shot Delta 100, I'm at 125th at 5.6. If I shot Delta 400, I'd be, uh, instead of 5.6, I'd be at, say, F8. That's a better spot to be in. F8 is, gives me a little more depth of field, uh, gives me a little more sharpness on my lens. So F8, and instead of a 125th, if I shot ISO 400 film, I'd be at a 250th. So now I'm at 250 at F8. Would I get a sharper picture at 250th at F8 with the 400 than I would at 125th at 5.6 with the 100? 
Now you'd be getting a little more grain, but maybe you'd be getting more sharpness. You'd kind of have to experiment and decide what would be beneficial to you. Now if you're using a tripod, then it doesn't really matter. But if you're hand holding it, maybe a 400 ISO is better. I like the 100, but it's right on the fringe. My lenses are wide open and I'm a 125th or a 60th is kind of right at the limit of hand holdability, and that's with a monopod. If I had a tripod, it wouldn't be an issue. So you've shot a few rolls of this Delta 100, now you're gonna process it. I've been using Kodak Extel Developer. I bought a case of it a few years ago. I'm on my last package, so I'll probably be switching to Ilford's ID11, which is a similar developer. Uh, it's a great place to start. If you're, if you're new to processing your own film, I would start with ID11. It's a powder that you mix up. And when I put it in the tank, I fill it right to the top. I don't want any bubbles in the tank. If I'm using a metal tank or a Patterson tank, I fill it right to the top. No bubbles. And the other thing that is kind of new with the Delta, the Delta films, they've changed the agitation that we should be using. So we used to agitate the whole 30 seconds, the first 30 seconds, and then we would agitate every half minute for five seconds. Now, Ilford is saying we're over agitating and we should be going four inversions in the first minute and then four inversions every minute. So instead of every half minute, it's every minute. And then you might just tap it a little bit to get any bubbles that might have formed with that. Now, if you fill right to the top, you probably won't get bubbles. Anyways, so Ilford is suggesting less agitation and that will give you finer grain and everybody likes finer grain. So maybe that's the new way to go. Less agitation. Uh, I would suggest the ID11 mix it one to one. That's a great starting point place. Uh, I'm finishing up the Extol, but I probably won't buy more Extol. I'll, I'll, I think I'll switch back to the ID11 that I used years ago. So these films, the Delta 100 or maybe Delta 400, I would call these standard films and they're a great place to start. If you haven't shot a lot of black and white, I would go with the Delta 100 or the 400. I would process in ID11. I'm finishing up some Extol, but I'll, I'm gonna switch back to ID11. Now I process it in the Extol. I mix it one to one with water, 20 degrees, 68 Fahrenheit. And I go 10 and a half minutes. And 10 and a half minutes is totally in line with the massive developing chart. This group of people have created this massive chart for developing film. It's got basically every film, every developer, every ratio for the development, different ISOs for the film. You just plug this in and it's a magnificent starting point for a new film that you're trying or a new developer that you're trying, or a new ratio with the with the developer. So it's a great place to start. I would start there. I, it's giving me 10 and a half minutes. That happens to be what I use with uh, Extol on the, on the Delta 100. So these are normal films that you can kind of learn with. Uh, nothing too weird. They're easy to find. They're easy to print. If you're scanning, I'm, I'm sure they'll work fine. But You've got a starting point and now as you go and learn, you can tweak it. Maybe you need a higher ISO because of, of camera shake. Maybe you're shooting on a tripod so the ISO is fine. Maybe the orange filter doesn't give you the sky that you want. Maybe you want to go with a yellow. Maybe you want to go with a red. Different things to try. But a great starting point would be Delta 100, shoot it at 60. That gives you a 125th at 5'6 full sun put with the orange filter on it, develop it in Extol or ID11 around 10 and a half minutes, but whatever the massive developing chart says to use, that's a great starting point. Less agitation than we were doing in the past. That's four inversions every minute. A Little bit of a tap, get the bubbles out. Should be great to go.